So uh, thank you everyone for being here. Um, it's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today we're going to discuss uh, <laughs> player ah, improvement, discuss? player experience improvement, as well as uh, improvement of accessibility in video games. Um, the first part of this ac this uh, talk, we're going to talk about uh, player improvement, player experience improvement. Um, on voit pas les slides. Je sais pas si je on peut. <laughs> All right, yes. so we're going to start by talking about the expertise that we have because the expertise that we have here at BMU enables us to uh, make great solutions in terms of uh, player experience as well as uh, accessibility. So one of the first uh, expertises that we have is neuro and biotechnologies. So among these, we work with EEG systems such as this one. Um, where we can put uh, EEG systems on our head with electrodes and read emotions in real time uh, of people while they play games or do any activity ac actually. And it's really for VR, uh, AR as well, uh, we could combine with HoloLens. Exactly, so they can be combined with many different uh, uh, devices. So the second expertise we have is computational intelligence. We have machine learning, deep learning and reality capture. We have accessibility, which we'll discuss later. Yeah, and uh, reality ca capture, to give you an idea, is the ability to combine LiDAR, 360 uh, camera, as well with a thermic camera and four microphones uh, in order to uh, um, proceed to a di digital twin or, or to have like a, a many sensors integrated in the same device. Yes. Perfect, yeah. We also have cognitive and virtual assistance gaming and gamification, as well as augmented analytics. So the whole of anything, like the Gestalt theory says, is uh, the whole of anything is greater than the sum of its parts. And that's especially true here. Um, every one of our expertise is, is very good, but when we combine them all together, we get that something that's even greater. So for example, when we combine neuroscience or neuro and biotechnologies with cognitive science and also machine learning um, and AI, then we get solutions that enable us to understand player emotions in real time uh, by analyzing brain waves in the, the brain while people, where players are playing games. So using all of these expertises together, we develop two solutions. The first being uh, improvement of players' experience. And by this, what we mean is uh, we want to obtain unbiased insights into players' experience through their emotions and mental states using our quick and easy uh, brainwave analysis using the EEG uh, that I showed earlier. And so we'll talk a bit about that more later on. And the second thing that our second solution is uh, improving game accessibility. And by this, what we mean is uh, we want to make games accessible to all players, uh, no matter their different accessibility needs. So let's start with players' experience. So what's the problem? We want to understand how players uh, play games, what they enjoy, what they don't enjoy, and improve their journey uh, through games. So we want to have insightful data as to uh, how they play, what they enjoy in the game. Um, we want their uncensored insights. So we want to understand, uh, do they really like um, certain theme or do they not like it but they're too shy to say it to the development team um, and we want all of this data to be efficiently generated so the solution that we we have is to easily and quickly deploy through our eeg headsets and a system that we'll discuss <laughs> later with sabi uh, we want it to be flexible to context and content so we want to be able to use it with for example vr systems uh, to be able to have readings of the EEG while people are playing VR games or console games or mobile games, anything like that. And we want it to be system agnostic, so for any different system. Yes. So our solution is separated into two different uh, tools. So first there's NEO or Neuro Experience Optimizer, which um, we use the EEG, EEG headset to record uh, data from the, the brain. So, Sabi, if you want to discuss a bit about how do yeah. we use NEO? Um, uh, in fact, uh, our uh, system uh, <coughs> combines different techniques uh, from... Um, uh, we have uh, earlier used the camera to uh, characterize the uh, facial expression using the muscle and also the uh, from the from that we got the system uh, that uh, 
uh, uh, that um, aligns the uh, EEG data with the facial expression and uh, now uh, only with uh, the EEG headset we, detects, uh, we detect the uh, current emotion and that's uh, good because uh, with the uh, VR headsets uh, we uh, uh, we can't detect the face, so uh, we, when combining the uh, EEG system and uh, the, um, the uh, VR headsets like Oculus or uh, uh, Google Glass or uh, the uh, Pico system, which is in the picture, we can uh, get uh, real-time feedback from the face, from the uh, face of the player and uh, we can uh, um, have uh, uh, an, um, <coughs> an insight uh, about his uh, player experience and uh, uh, even adapt the environment to the, uh, c uh, to the current uh, emotional state. We also get uh, from the EEG the cognitive measures like, like the uh, workload, uh, which is the, uh <coughs> the amount of information uh, that uh, he uh, is uh, receiving, that uh, the brain is receiving from the interface and also the engagement in his task in the game and uh, his focus. So uh, with this measure, we can uh, have uh, an uh, in-depth uh, analysis and uh <coughs> adapt the game to the uh, to the to the player which is the human centric uh, uh environment so uh, our deployment are for uh, virtual reality augmented reality have an mbs uh, insights and uh <coughs> of the player without asking him so uh, we get uh, real time feedback and uh uh, with that, we can improve uh, the environment's uh, metaverse also. It can be applied uh, for a uh, um, uh, uh, lot of uh, type of environments and uh, even with uh, <coughs> multiplayer uh, environment, for example, uh, we have Oasis, which is uh, a multiplayer environment for uh, human uh, uh, health and well-being so yeah yeah and uh, so basically we manage uh, through uh, research uh, uh, throughout the last uh, six years now uh, to gather about uh, 90 metrics uh, from the brain using the full coverage and being able after that to uh, adapt it uh, to different uh, EEG uh, etc so basically uh, Sabi uh, went through a few of the metrics but we have other metrics such as uh, confusion uh, fun, we're working on the mental fatigue, uh, hypervigilance, and uh, so uh, they, all of these metrics are gathered at the same time and, uh, um, and ready to deploy uh, in multiple ways. I'll go back to uh, Alex. Perfect, thank you, thank you. Um, so NeuroExpress Optimizer, or NEO, enables us to collect data from the brain. And when we combine that with our other tool, which is AIR, or Augmented Intelligence Reporting Tool, we extract insights from the data that we recorded through the EEG um, headset. So the result of that is unbiased and uncensored insights into the player's experience. So just to recap what you, you both just said, um, how it works. So the first, start, the first part is to equip the participant or the, u the player with the EEG headset. As you've seen the pictures, it can be like a headset, uh, which <laughs> kind of looks like a bathing cap. <laughs> or you can have another type of headset, which is this one, the crown, which uh, just works like this. And you can put over it uh, either um, a VR headset, like this one, and what's in the videos or the images. Um, or you can also uh, use any type of video game you want. Then the second step is to calibrate uh, the system. So as you can see on the screen, um, we have a bunch of measures uh, that Sabi told us a bit earlier, uh, as well as Jan. So we have to calibrate the system as a function of each different participant so, they can, uh, so we can have data that's relevant to each player individually. Then we let the player play the game as if it, it was a normal session, playing session. And the only difference is that while they are playing the game, we are recording everything that's going on in their brain. Um, and then finally, that step, that step is over. We've collected all of the data, uh, so the hard part's over. What we do next is we go on our, a or our AIR tool, so Augmented Intelligence Reporting Tool, that enables us to generate insights very easily 
um, from the EEG data so we can understand what are the points where the user, the player was very confused and understand why they were confused. Is it because there was a bug? Is, that, is it because there was a, an issue in the game? Um, so then we can understand what's going on uh, in the player's journey. Yeah, or were they, lo they lost their interest, their engagement? Uh, was there like a, a special punch that the creator wanted to, to generate, such as a, a fear or make them laugh? Is it happening or not? And uh, see these gaps. Uh, so in having like a, a, a new uh, layer of intelligence in order uh, to uh, j adjust and balance uh, the, the player's experience. Okay. Yep. So uh, I uh, can uh, uh, sh share my screen to uh, to make uh, yeah, a demo. Yeah, we share the screen of uh, Sabi uh, just uh, yes, uh, a little bit. In yes, order to I have the headset on my head, uh, the uh, crown headset, so which is uh, yes. eight uh, sensor. Uh, Sabi has already uh, set up uh, yeah. his headset. So here we get uh, the uh, the signals from the brain and. Uh <coughs> They are the raw data, but uh, from this data we can uh, evaluate the uh, emotional state uh, of the of the player. So we can um, start the metrics uh, that uh, take a uh, few uh, s t a few time to be uh, calibrated. And yeah, uh, we, uh, we need to do like an individual uh, calibration so uh, to each user, which takes less than uh, about a minute. Yeah. So uh, basically, we're calibrating to the baseline of uh, Savi's brain. Yeah, we have here the uh <coughs> the emotion real time, the uh, which are uh, detected from the uh, uh, face muscle. So uh <coughs> it evaluates uh, the uh, the patterns of the face and uh, give us uh, probability in real time from uh, the different uh, basic emotion based on the uh, Ekman uh, theory. So. Uh <coughs> And uh, we have here uh, different uh, emotions, and also we can get the uh, uh, the emotional state, which is uh, based on the on the Russell uh, <coughs> uh, Russell uh, circumflex uh, uh, model, which gives us uh, uh, real time the uh, different uh, uh, mood in real time. And uh, also the cognitive measure, which are the uh, based in uh, in uh, the <coughs> uh, in the nasatelics, so they give us the uh, engagement uh, in the task or your uh, your uh, workload uh, for uh <coughs> and uh, seeking for information, for example, or your uh, um, I uh, if you are uh, looking for something in an environment, uh, it detects your uh, visual span uh, in the uh, environment and your engagement in... Uh, yeah, the uh, engagement will kick in soon. Uh, this was the calibrating uh, baseline for the different sub-tools uh, so uh, under the system, just to show you a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the 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 these measures are uh, can be uh, fed to an environment that can adapt with this uh, measure and uh, give uh, more uh, suitable or personalized uh, environment for uh, each uh, person. Yeah, uh, uh, as the, the metrics are live, uh, it allows to do a uh, novo adaptive uh, environment, so you could adjust it to, to tune your games or to uh, tune a tutorial or uh, to have like an, an wellness, like a, a therapy that adjusts to an individual. So Sabi, could you start and say, oh now we, we start all the sub tools. Yeah, and see you um, for uh, uh, tracking. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, yes, okay. Mm, I will start this. So with NCU, we can. Uh, um, where is it? We can uh, log to our system and uh, and uh, record, uh, <coughs> for example, the casting of uh, the VR. For example, with the, uh, this headset, we can combine it with the uh, Oculus, uh, the Oculus, or uh, uh <coughs> yeah, well, could you maybe uh, start a video just to make a, a real demo uh, or, or take something something existing? Okay, because um. we've shown like uh, the the behind. 
okay. the tech, but we'd like to show the tool itself. Okay. Mm, yes. So while Sabi is doing this, just to recap a bit, um, so what we can do also with this is Im improve players' experience while they, they are playing a game. So we can understand in real time, is the player frustrated? Is, is he or she too frustrated? Are they losing engagement? And as a function of these readings, we can understand what we can do to improve the game. So maybe we have to make it harder, mm -hmm. make it less hard, the, the difficulty levels to keep the players engaged in, in the games. We can also understand uh, where the players are most engaged to understand what this player well, profile, uh, what they specifically like about games. So we can adapt the games specifically to each different player. Get captures, yeah. So in the system, we have to input a, a bunch of different information like Sabi is doing right now. And while he's doing this, the system just calibrated itself. And now we can see all of the emotions that Sabi uh, is, is living. So we, thanks to the EEG headset that is on his head right now, um, we see on the screen all of the emotions. So if it's green, then it's good. Red, it's bad. And if it's increasing or decreasing. Um, yeah, and you, you do have the instant, uh, instant uh, uh, data metrics that we show in the first column. And the last uh, metric is the cumulative uh, information from the start of the uh, experience. Yes, and uh, here if you, I don't know. I so Sabi is looking for content now. In terms of content, we usually have video games, but for here, just an example, uh, okay, we'll have like a video, games, uh, uh, yeah. YouTube video or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe for, uh, I don't know, I like this one. So while Sabi is uh. watching the video, we'll be able to see in real time what he's, he's feeling. So is he stressed out? Is he uh, happy? Is he engaged? Etc. No, like that. <laughs> Yeah, I can show <laughs> this one, which is uh, an advertisement for uh, GoPro, for example. And it gives us the, uh, for example, I can... Uh, whoa. <laughs> uh. So it, it is a content, a, stimula, a stimulus for uh, the session experience. But uh, also it gives us uh, the feedback in real time, so uh, maybe... Uh, Maybe I can show this one. <laughs> no, NCU. NCU, okay. NCU is uh, here. Okay, but uh, usually we use uh, two screens, so uh, one for the controlling and the uh, recording of the uh, s uh, uh, for the recording of the session, and the other is uh, for uh, for the visualization uh, for the player. And, uh, ah, okay. You don't have your second screen. Yeah. Yes, so uh, for example, we can see. Uh, oops. So uh, I don't know, but. So, like this, so <laughs> I tried to do the uh, recording of the session, but. Uh, So uh, you can get the concept that we are simultaneously recording the uh, emotions and or the cognitive state uh, with the uh, real experience uh, in VR, for example, which is very useful for VR, but also uh, uh, traditional uh, multimedia content. Okay. okay. So we'll go back to our toilet seat. Continue. Uh, thank you, Sammy. <laughs> and sorry not to have like any content adapted to game that we could have started right away. We miss plan having your second monitor. <laughs> okay. All right. So if we continue, thanks, Abby, for the demonstration. Um, so this was how it works. And here are everything that we can measure. So we have quite a few different uh, measurements of EEG um, emotions and mental states uh, that we did over years of research and collaborations with uh, universities across the world. Um, and here we have just a few of uh, our measurements. And if we skip this to the other slide, we have a bunch more. So there's quite a lot of things that we can measure and see how the, the players are, are experiencing the moment. <laughs> So how, why is this useful? This is useful because it enables us to, un to have a global assessment of the player's engagement, fun, and the overall playability of the game. 
enables us to also tag different events. So we can tag, for example, if there's a bug in a game, we can say, OK, this is a bug, tag it with a bug, and then send it to the appropriate team to solve the bug. We can also filter different metrics, so see what are the top 10 most uh, enjoyable moments and what are the top 10 most scary moments. Uh, Etc. And where finally, yeah. Go yeah, on. where the gamer were the most confused, uh, mm -hmm. where they uh, were they scared, where they did they lost an uh, interest, and, and so on. Exactly, exactly. And then, why? What are the advantages of the solution? Well, it's simple to collect data. As you can see, when we demonstrated with Sabi, um, he we collected data immediately, just like that. So that was pretty simple. We leverage AI to generate insights, and after we have the, the data, we can have video playbacks to understand uh, what was going on in the player's mind and what was going on in the game. So we can pair both together and see uh, what are the, the correlations that we can make right there. And we, have, we can also re record emotions through um, audio and textual data. So using NLP methods, we can understand uh, the sentiment, we can understand if they're happy or not, so we can also uh, use the data that's in the chat rooms or etc. Yeah, well, I can hear in my, for this experience, we, uh, we have uh, just uploaded what we have seen in the screen. Uh, Alexi, do you already have a video to, to show? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, could we move to Sabi's screen? Thank you. So here we have an our, uh, what we have done now. We have uh, all the data uh, uh, uploaded on our website, so we can uh, uh, check which uh, po part gives us uh, s um, uh, certain peaks in the emotional data. Yeah, we could uh, unselect the, the one that we don't want to see. Okay. Keep only the, the key one that are interesting for us uh, for now, as an example. Our engagement. And then they will, these will be uh, reused uh, as playback. And we could uh, select the, the peaks or ask our, our platform to show us, for example, the top 10 areas yes. where the player was the most confused and so on. And we could see it uh, automatically associated so. with the information. OK, uh, thank you, Sabi. So let's uh, go back to, uh, to Alexi. All right. And yes, w as we can see on screen right now, we also have a pie chart of everything, all the emotions and the proportions uh, that Sabi lived them through. So I think the PowerPoint went back to the first slide. Um, I'm just trying to get it to a new slide. I guess it's not working. Um, but the next topic we wanted to discuss was accessibility. And perfect, yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, let's go back and there you go, game accessibility. <laughs> so uh, what's the problem? Well, the problem is that not enough games are accessible to all players. Some players need different uh, accessibility accommodations. For example, some players have visual deficiencies, and it's important to consider them while we're, we're developing games so that they can play as well. Uh, other people can have uh, hearing disabilities. We can have cognitive disabilities, and it's important to consider this and take this all into account when developing the games. So what we need is representative data uh, of the population as a whole with all the diverse player profiles, which would enable us to have a better understanding of accessibility preferences and needs for different people. Again, we want a system that's easily deployable and that's flexible for different needs, system agnostic and reliable. The solution that we have is to pair our systems, so NEO and AIR that we showed earlier, uh, with the certification, the accessibility player uh, experience design patterns that we're going to discuss just a bit later. And when we combine uh, NEO and AIR, so the data that we can collect through EEG, even voice and textual analysis, we can obtain uh, patterns and understand how to make your games uh, better for, for everybody. So here we see the player experience uh, patterns is patterns. The first one being access patterns. Um, by this we mean we want the games to be accessible to everyone. We want the game to be playable by anyone. So if someone has an issue with uh, the, their right or left hand, we want them to be able to play the game nonetheless uh, by maybe remapping the controller so they only have to use their right hand, for example. Uh, so accessibility patterns enable us to make the, your game more accessible to those who, who have different needs. 
Um, and then in terms of challenge patterns, we want everybody to enjoy the different patterns that the, the game offers. So sometimes a challenge, uh, for example, a boss could be too hard for some people, and it's important to be able to uh, skip bosses or uh, accommodate different people who have different needs in terms of that. Yeah, and some people may be hypersensible or uh, when they, uh, they have uh, certain types of uh, autism, uh, you, the, you need to moderate the, the games uh, yes. so the emotion does not go too high, uh, too, too quick as well. Exactly, exactly. And this is what we were talking about right here, exactly. So if we use Neo and Air, our two tools, then we can understand where are the people most confused, uh, where are they most frustrated, and where are they most scared to understand where we should uh, modify the game to to make it more appropriate for everyone. Keep the flow of the player, and uh, but uh, also um, find like the uh, the sweet balance. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And on the flip side, we want to see the lowest pla the places where they're the least surprised or the least engaged and the least they have the least fun. So we can understand how to improve their uh, experience to them specifically. Yeah, and to match with the creator vision as well. Exactly, so we want to understand uh, how the, the players react versus how the, the game designers intended the game to make the <laughs> players react. So yes. we can see the discrepancies between the two. But yeah. we have also more, uh, also uh, techniques for uh, voice uh, analysis or uh <coughs> To detect what uh, what is uh, uh, the what is the interaction between uh, players and uh, even the toxicity and uh, which is uh, also uh, another uh, subject that uh, we can uh, monitor for uh, uh, bullying in uh <coughs> uh, in uh, MMO like the uh, yes so, so uh, Alexi has a topic still yep. <laughs> no worries. So this enables us uh, to optimize the application of APX design patterns by detecting salient uh, events in the game using the EEG devices to, to be able to associate what's going on in the game with what's going on in the brain. Why is this useful? Well, this gives, gives us an idea of the global accessibility of your game. It enables us to, again, similarly to the player improvement experience, um, to tag events, filter events as well, and dispatch the different uh, bugs or, or s events to the different teams that, that need them. Um, there you go. And then the advantages of this solution is that it's really easy to use. So the only thing that has to change is that you have your players wear an EEG headset while they're playing the game. And then we can have all of this data uh, and understand why why they are struggling with certain parts and what we can do to improve uh, mm. improve the game. Yeah, make it more accessible. And all of that is uh, <coughs> offered by the artificial intelligence, uh, thanks to the the new technologies and uh, different uh <coughs> ways for, uh, for example, for uh, EEG biofeedbacks or uh, for voice or uh <coughs> yeah, we can apply it in different uh, multimedia also. So uh, yes, uh, exactly. Yeah. Right. So uh, with the help of AI, uh, you, uh, we've managed to. Uh, uh, you, it's a it's a great tool to to be able to balance and find uh, the the different issues of accessibility and try to make uh, the the content uh, more uh, understandable. And uh, so, basically. Uh, with, uh, with the tools that we've developed, we, we also have like emotion by voice, uh, social analytics. So all of these, uh, analyzing the, the player social interaction, analyzing the communication, what they're saying, uh, emotion by voice and so on, could be all the other combination and appli application of a AI that could be combined with the EEG. Uh, Alexi. And so what's next uh, for us now and how we can improve games even more? Uh, we can have AI coaches for live assistance, so we can have coaches that enable players to um, better go through uh, or make the games more accessible in re real time, so directly uh, modify the game's parameters to adapt to the different players. Or apply it for medical use. Uh, exa or exactly. Yeah. We can apply these systems for m in medical uh, <laughs> domains, which we actually do 
um, for Alzheimer's disease, for example, and we can use these uh, for in-building sensors so we can analyze people and how, how they're doing and adapt the real world environment to them as a function of, of uh, how they're feeling. Yeah, so thank you again for thank your time. So I hope that uh, uh, the, this was like uh, uh, helpful uh, that, that you had, uh, you appreciate the information. So thank you for, uh, for your interest. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.